Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine's live show. Today it's again, once again, on lockdown. This time I'm with Tony Rizzozzi. Tony, welcome to the show, man. How's it, man? Thanks for having me, Khalid. Yeah, no problem, man. So um, let's just start with this lockdown. And how, what are you doing as a cricketer? Like I've asked, I've spoken to quite a few guys and they, they give me some tips and et cetera on, on training and eating habits, et cetera. But what sort of um, training regime have you been put on and how did you put it together? Uh, we got a few things from Cricket South Africa, like uh obviously there's a few guys like myself who don't have access to like home gyms and stuff so like body weight uh training programs um and then obviously i have to send it through to our trade at the cobras um and then yeah just being disciplined enough to i suppose do it every day and um yeah eating healthy um trying to cut down on the snacks and biscuits and stuff uh <laughs> but yeah other than that you just we pretty much were lucky enough we were given a program that we can follow you can mix and match i suppose to try and make your own programs or make it tough yourself but yeah they've given us a tool so it's up to us to just kind of do it um has it been difficult for you to keep stay disciplined and um just keep focused or what are some things that you can give advice to younger kids to like just keep the discipline and not be tempted into obviously <laughs> trying all the snacks etc uh i think if you um if you have your own goals obviously um whatever they are maybe you have weight goals or you obviously have like cricket goals that you want to reach then you know you have to kind of put in the work um and whenever you want to kind of sway off from that goal um then you can kind of just remind yourself of those goals if you have them written down i have a diary that i try to plan out the day um uh, in hours just like okay from two to four i'll do gym or read or whatever so trying to plan out the day so it doesn't feel like you know you lose track of time um and obviously when, once you tick, tick that off it's like a small goal that you're achieving every day which i guess kind of helps when you're in lockdown yeah okay cool so let's start with let's continue actually this conversation and let's talk a little bit about your journey so far in, in cricket it's been quite an exciting journey um you've you've risen to kind of You've, you've built your own kind of cult following. Whenever I speak about you on, or whenever we speak about the up and coming stars on on, on, our, on our platform, is, your name is always mentioned as, as one of the top guys. So let's just start with how you were introduced to cricket and what your journey was like at the beginning of your career, maybe before you hit high school or during your high school career, obviously hitting into high school and then uh, just before yeah. your career. Uh, so yeah, at high school obviously I was a kid. So I played um, obviously all the age groups. I uh, had a good side. I went through really, really good coaches. With Arthur Demato was um, our great head coach, and they all, always make jokes that um, at kids you need to go through the Arthur Demato Academy in grade eight. Um, and then yeah, I was lucky. I had, uh, Ryan Cook was my coach for a few years at first team, um, and I, I had some really good coaches and. And then, like you said, I, I made the move across to to Tux um, to study, mm. and then was picked up by Titans. Um, so yeah, I, I suppose it happened quite quickly for me. Um, I didn't have a great World Cup; I don't, not many of us did, besides maybe Liam Smith mm. and Mild had a decent World Cup, but a lot of us didn't, and we had to go away, work hard, and um, yeah. yeah, I think out of that, a lot of guys, bar one or two, are pretty much playing franchise cricket somewhere in the world, and I think. Mm. We've we've done well as a group. Um, I think for me, I played obviously a lot of sports at school, and I obviously had to make the decision to choose cricket um, yeah. or rugby. Um, I couldn't really see myself tackling big oaks for the rest of my life, so yeah, so I chose cricket. Um, and then yeah, I suppose that now I'm here where I am. The reason for picking cricket, especially besides obviously you. Um, not wanting to tackle big guys for the rest of your life. I mean, I know what it's like when I was at school. I was quite a small guy at school, and uh, we had to play against Paul Boys and all those big guys. And the, I remember a story when my father took me for my first game at, in Paul in Paul for the Paul Boys game. I was at Rondebosch, so yeah, he drove he drove me to the field, and and as we pulled up and walked to the field, it, he was like, "Don't worry, that's the first team." Um, that, 
that you can that's not that's not your team that you're playing against and then the game stalker was actually the team i'm playing so <laughs> so they were I'm huge guys yeah the best of man so you if you weren't a cricket uh, what, what else would you have picked well if i didn't choose cricket then i probably would have chosen chosen rugby um okay. and then obviously studied or something like that um i think I, like i did play provincial rugby and stuff like that so i probably would have tried to go down that path uh but i think i chose cricket because i enjoyed it um uh i enjoyed captaining at high school um i think i could see uh myself like i said enjoying the sport for a lot longer um yeah. which is obviously important and yeah just something in me just said i felt like i could make a difference playing cricket or something like that and so that's the the path i wanted to go down so with regards to your your schooling career obviously at kes um what was it like to be there um i know you have some famous guys that were with you there grant rulerson is one of them that we recently covered and what were those yes. guys like and the mentality how do kes help you guys with your mentality when it comes to your sport and obviously they're the top school when it comes to cricket they're always producing players that are in the top tier like currently Bryce Parsons etc so how do you, uh, what was case like in your development i think like i said we we had we had really good coaches um experienced coaches that knew what you how you needed to train or like you said your mentality you needed to to be successful at that level i think because there's so many people that come to case obviously with the 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 dream or idea of <clears throat> becoming a professional cricketer you're competing with a lot of guys already <clears throat> just at school so yeah. you already in that competitive mindset you already know that you, all right you might see for instance grant is hitting 100 balls today and he scored 100 this weekend i need to hit 150 balls if i want to get better. so you're always competing even in your own team um yeah. and i think that's probably what separates the likes of kids from other schools i think saints has the same thing with this you'll have a lot of good guys and in the school um competing and that obviously pushes you and the guys who don't push obviously fall away so i think at case i was obviously lucky to always be competing with with really good players and the decision to go because obviously generally speaking people would want to think okay lions is the next step um the decision to go to the titans was it the easy decision for you um or was it a, was it a tricky one uh, no, I didn't get a, a contract out of school. I just went to study. I spoke to a uh, peer initially at Tux and then Kriya van Veik, and they uh, had a nice conversation with Kriya. He really wanted to work with me. Um, so initially, I was just basically going to play for Tux and study. Um, like I said, I didn't have a, a great World Cup, so none of the franchises or semi pro teams wanted me, so, which I accepted, and I was just basically, like I said, going to study and obviously playing cricket and hopefully see what happens from there. So I think... Yeah, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't signed with Titans out of school. I just went to go play for Tux and I was lucky that I had Kriya who was like a mentor and coach and I learned a lot from mm -hmm. him. And then, like I said, then I played semi-pro and, and then uh, Titans. So is there, obviously for, for the guys that are not, um, not everybody is lucky enough to go through the provincial levels or they just make it or they're just on the edge of making it into provincial teams um do you have some tips for those guys on how to stay focused and and to to to, to stay focused and and believe in their dreams and continue to try to chase them yeah i think it's easy to say like you know all the uh like coach carter stuff you know keep pushing um keep believing all that stuff i think the most important thing is you you always have to be honest with yourself especially as a if your dream is to be a sportsman or anything along that path um you have to be honest with yourself and if you believe that you can make it that's the most important thing you might need only maybe one or two more other people coaches or something to see that or believe it but i think the most important thing i think that i've noticed is or felt is that especially with cricket you're going to fail a lot more than you do well um mm. and like you're saying when you're trying to make provincial teams or whatever you might have had a gun season and then you get those trial weekends or whatever and you don't score runs and you think uh, you don't make it you know? and then it's important to still you know believe in yourself not necessarily look outside look at the system or look at quotas or look at this coach wasn't watching when i scored runs or the selector wasn't you know it's very easy to start looking outwards i think when you're trying to make it up the ranks the most important thing i felt was to just keep that self-belief as soon as you stop that 
um, and it becomes very tough to push. Like I said, when you go through tough times, um, obviously you want to enjoy it. That's like obviously the first thing you want to do. But I think for me personally, I went through ups and downs at high school and all of that. I would make teams or wouldn't make teams. And you had to just keep believing that this is the path you wanted to take and keep believing that you were good enough. Uh, whether it happened today or in two years' time, you had to just believe. And if you don't, then, yeah, yeah. it might be tough. So, obviously, transition. Um, the Titans, biggest one of the biggest franchises in the country. I'm playing under Mark Boucher, who's now the Proteus coach. Can you maybe give me some insight into what it was like to play with the players that were at that, at that franchise as well as under a coach like Mark Boucher? Uh, I think I was lucky in my first year. Uh, I had LB who spoke to me at Tux. Uh, when I was training, he said, I want, he wanted me to come through and train. And I obviously played a few tournaments and, and won a few trophies with him as a captain. And I learned a lot from him, the way he carried himself, the way he spoke to people, um, the trust that he put in guys, even new guys coming into the team. Um, so I learned a lot from him. And then I was also lucky to have my friend Jono, uh, Jonathan Vandia, who I'm sure you know. Um, yeah. He's obviously been around. He's seen everything, and I used to hit a I hit a lot of balls with him. Spoke to him a lot about my game. Um, obviously, him being a left hander helped a lot. So he, I think him, especially the last two seasons, has been instrumental. After the training, I would just go have a chat with him because he lives quite close to the ground. Play some FIFA, talk cricket, and he's obviously a senior player. Um, it's around game plans, and I was really lucky as a youngster to have someone like that in the team um, because. Like you said, there's a lot of unbelievable players in that team. You might have Aiden, Dean, Fudgy. You can go through the ranks. Um, yeah. But sometimes it's tough and you you, you don't – as much as you guys always say you want to go learn from these guys, it's tough because you initially as a youngster, you still see them as – you still put them on the pedestal. Yeah. And I was lucky, like I'm saying, that I had Jono, um, who even though he, like he will say, has gone through ups and downs, he was still willing to always help me, always chat. Um, so I leaned a lot on him. And then, yeah, Boucher was a really, really good coach. He, One thing I thought that was interesting or good was that whenever we'd get through semifinals or finals, nothing would change. Um, he wasn't someone to try to hype you up. If anything, he tried to get everyone in their own little zone and get everyone doing whatever they felt needed to be done for them to tick on the day. So I always thought that was interesting and different, and I actually enjoyed that. Um, Obviously, Mandela was just now has just taken over now. So I'm sure in the season to come, he will pretty much get his own philosophy and there he's going. Um, but yeah, I think Boucher was a, a, a nice coach to have. Uh, like you say, you working with a, a, a Proteus legend, um, which is awesome. The way he reads the game, there's things he would say to us in four-day games at tea breaks and stuff like that. You obviously pick up and you can obviously feel the amount of knowledge and uh, experience that he has so that was that was always exciting and, and and nice to have in the change room and and being around guys like ab and guys like dean of course and Heinrich Klassen, um talk to me a little bit about the, some of those proteus guys and and what sort of insights they gave you to the game and how much did they actually help you with your development i think uh like you have three guys there which is quite a nice example you have three guys that are very different you have dean who's a grafter who, who thinks a lot about the game, um, a quite easy guy to talk to, uh, and you know, like a tough, a tough cricketer, as everyone always says about Dean. But yeah. and then you have Classy, who's obviously a, a Classy and AB a, a, a lot more flair. Um, they see the game in a different way. So having those kind of guys in your change room, it, it's nice because it's it shows you that they've all been to the top, and they've all pretty yeah. much done it in a different way, which gives you the confidence that you know, not necessarily your way, but there is a way, a different way to skin the cat and you can do it. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. They're all not yeah, all the same. Fudgy is also not the same. Um, I mean, and he's a legend. Um, and you can just see the way he goes about his training and stuff like that, that there's so many different ways to get the best out of yourself mm -hmm. or to, you know, get switched on. Um, you don't necessarily always have to talk to those guys. You can just watch. Um mm -hmm. Uh, AB will come to, I mean, I worked with him at MSL and a bit at the Titans and he'll train for like 15 minutes, but like really, really hard, like sweating just for 15 minutes and then leave. And then you're thinking, well, how does he, and then like, surely he hasn't hit enough. And then the next day he'll come and obviously 
bash Oaks around. So he knows what he needs to do to get him working. But then you'll you'll get Fudgy who asks for throws for an hour. Do you, do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of guys yeah. doing different things, and you you kind of pick up on that. Yeah. So was there a lot of bonding off the field with regards to keeping you guys together? And um, did you guys have a lot of interaction, or is it just you go to training, you work together, play in a match, and then separate ways? Uh, there's a bit of that, but then there's obviously at the Titans, we're uh, really lucky in the sense that you obviously do like a lot of preseason stuff, like the State Shows Tour. That's where you really get a chance to connect with the guys. Um, obviously, it's easier to connect with guys when you might have a beer in your hand. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah, there's a few things that guys do. We are, you know, we have a little thing where we try to stay after the game. Um, and I think that's something that uh, the senior guys and including John that pushed is that as youngsters, it's easy after the game to take your stuff and leave. Um, but actually after the game, even if it's just for like 20 minutes, half an hour, that's actually where you pick up on stuff because guys speak about what's actually happened in the game, not necessarily the coach, you know, having a sit down with these checkpoints and stuff like that. It's actually just sitting in a casual uh, environment I mean, you can always ask questions, you know, guys, you just hear, you pick up on conversations, what guys notice, and you hear things that maybe you weren't even thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, and because it's in a casual thing, you're more relaxed and you're more receptive to the information. So we had that. Um, I think in every team, you're obviously going to be closer to certain guys or, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. That's always going to be the case. But I think we did encourage that kind of stuff at the Tizens, which was lacquer. Yeah. Any, any piece of advice that stuck to you, something that's really stood out by anybody um, that you, in your, at your time, during your time at the Titans? Um, I think uh, someone, like I said, someone like Jono, I don't think I can pinpoint one quote or something like that, but he has said a few things like I have and I've rewritten in my cricket diary, if you want to call it that. Um, that has stuck um, in terms of game plans and, and stuff like that. And I think um, he has said a few things to me that uh, not necessarily just cricket, but, you know, the full development, so your mental, everything that I've, that I've really, that has really hit home with me and I've um, obviously really appreciated. So I can't, like I said, I can't quote him now, sorry, but mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, he has given me a few things to to keep. So you spoke about these influential guys at the Titans that that helped you with your career when you were a youngster, and you still are a youngster. But I mean, when you were younger and yeah. it's coming into that setup in the franchise setup, you move now over to the Cobras, where you will be one of those regarded as one of those star players in those sides. You join the likes of Jana Manmalan, who's now played for the Proteas, of Kyle Verena, um, George Linder, Zubair, under the names just go on and on of these youngsters that have that have transcended and gone on to for, for, to our play higher honors. You join a dressing room like that. How are you going to approach this? Um, you you would obviously have played against him, had some interaction with him, but um, how do you approach it now as being one of the new seniors kind of from a domestic experience point of view, number of years played point of view? So how do you go into your new venture at the Cobras? Uh, I think I'm lucky in the sense that I've, like you said, I've played with a few of the guys um, at academies or whatever and against varsity cups, everything. So it's not like I'm going in blind. I, I know a lot of the guys, which would be nice. It's easier to connect. Um, and I think for me, the big thing is obviously when you're coming in, you want to contribute. Um, yeah. And that's uh, on and off the field for me. Uh, I think maybe at Titans, I was a victim of not maybe always contributing off the field so i think for me it's about connecting with these guys um and like you're saying even if i'm a bit youngster a bit young coming to the team still uh viewing myself as a leader and not necessarily being captain or something but just leading in the way i perform where i carry myself <coughs> with the young guys and then obviously just feeding off the energy those guys have been doing well for a while um, yeah, and that's maybe also why I'm, that's also one of the reasons why I'm going there. So to be part of that culture, um, and ultimately you, as much as you, like you're saying, you want to be part of the young guys and contribute, whatever you also want to win trophies. And that's also the reason I'm going there is I would like to be part of a team that 
I feel I've contributed to a trophy or to a special moment and, and, and it really means something. So, and I think with that group of players, I'll have the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I mean, you said in a feature with one of our guys, Mark, you, you were obviously, and you were, spoke to some of our guys, uh, you wrote a feature with one of our guys and you did a feature. Yeah. Um, so just tell me what you, you, your main statement was that you would like to play with Ashwa Prince. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and uh, I want, why, why Ashwa? What stood out to you about Ashwa? Well, obviously, there's the, the things on the on the face. I mean, left hander, um, played for South Africa, dominated for a while. His numbers speak for himself. So, there's someone that's done it, um, and that's obviously always, um, I don't know, something easy is you always just try to follow someone that's done it. Um, yeah. Then you obviously look like you said to the young guys that have been coming through under or with him at the at the home, um, which means that he's obviously doing the right thing. Um, and then I think, like I said, I did work with him a little bit at National Academy. Um, he, he came in for a few days because I think he was with the A side. And I just really enjoyed the way he spoke about the game, the way he viewed the game. Um, and I've spoken to him a few times before. And I don't know, I just got a good vibe from him. And I feel like, obviously, like you said, I'm still a youngster and I still need to learn in that. Yeah. And I feel like if young batters in particular are learning well or doing well under him, then I would like to give myself the same opportunity to do the same. Yeah, so obviously competing against him, um, they, there are certain similarities, I feel, between him and Boucher from a, from a mental point of view. He always, in the interview that I had with him, he spoke about always trying to come in in a difficult time when the, when the top order has dropped, etc., and then he has to come in and, and perform. So uh, I think it's kind of going to may, may, maybe be a, like a seamless um, move for you, I feel. Uh, I think personally it's a brilliant move for you. Um, you you'll be you. able to back in the, in, the, in the top order. I feel anywhere in the top order is, it fits for you. Are you fine with that or, or do you specifically want to bat as an opener? No, I'm fine with that. I think obviously... Um, I didn't just sign actual obviously you look at the numbers you look you're gonna have to compete against um with yanaman and pete at the top and that's fine and like you said i think i can bat pretty much anywhere in the top order um and i'd be happy with that i think that as long as i'm growing and learning and putting in good performances then i'm doesn't matter as long as i'm winning games for my team if i'm batting eight then yeah. that's good yeah so i made a mistake earlier on it's actually dan that actually wrote that article yeah, on you dan. and you it was Dan, not Mark. Um, there's been so much content, I said it's been coming out over the last few weeks. So yeah. um, um, it was really awesome. It was actually Dan's first article. So I um, hope you guys. Yeah. Gonna, cool. yeah um, so let's talk a little bit about you as a person. Um, you know, in lockdown, obviously you have to train, etc. And you know that's the boring things that we have to hear and listen to. But what are the sort of things? Yeah. <laughs> what are the sort of things that you like to do besides that? Um, we've had some guys speak about PlayStation, Xbox. What is your things that you like uh, to get up to? Luckily, I got myself a, a little quarantine bear. I don't know where she is, though. <laughs> uh, she makes like a food and stuff. Uh, we watch we watch a lot of series together. I think at the moment we're watching Money Heist, which is quite cool. Um, oh, wow. Sometimes, because uh, it's a, I think it's a Spanish or Portuguese show, and then they obviously have English people talking yeah. over it. Sometimes when the mouths... And the thing you yeah. don't match up can be a bit annoying, but it's quite cool. Yeah. Um, and then, um, other than that, I'm not going to watch it in the dub. I'm not going to watch the dubbed version. I'm going to actually watch the subtitles. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm uh, reading. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I, I play a lot of FIFA, which she's also not too happy about. I play a lot of uh, FUT. My team oh, yes. actually getting Kane on this weekend league currently. I've lost like four wow. penalty shootouts. I don't even know how I've got to four penalty shootouts. I've got no BMT on FIFA. But um, yeah, I play a lot of FIFA. I don't really play shooting games and stuff. That's yeah. whack. That's weird. I just play FIFA. And then, yeah, a lot of reading, uh, a lot of writing in my journal. No, I don't do poetry or anything like that. Nothing deep, just writing. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm a very chill guy. We did a puzzle. Yeah. But yeah, that didn't last very long. We just ended up using it with uh, We both get distracted quite easily. So yeah, we just chill. <laughs> Nothing hectic, man. I, I like to watch series. Chill. Cool. Um, 
I just started FUT now recently because I've only found yes. a little bit of time now. Give me some tips, man. Because I mean, I started my team. I'm a band new, yeah. massive band new fan. That's so I obviously, we have to end with all. No, thanks, Khalid. <laughs> 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 so I, I obviously started with I tried to get the best gold packs that I could get. Oh, not gold packs, but gold yes. players that I could get. So I've gotten like fast players that I know, like Martial and obviously Daniel James yes. and Rashford. Yes. And I'm, yes. I'm holding the team. Get coins quickly, man. Like flip. I'm struggling see, to like get. I, I, you're doing it like how I did it the right way. Then there's guys that actually buy packs like with their credit cards and stuff. Don't do that. That yeah. is shocking. That'll come back and bite you. And all the deflections and posts and stuff don't go your way. It's because of that. So do it the right way. Yeah. Um, I think, like, for me, I took long because you need to try getting to weekend league. That's the best thing. Because you'll probably be in, like, what, Division 8 now? I don't even know. Probably I like never played online opponent. So. If you get into – if you're in Division 7 or 8, you just need to play to try get into weekend league. Once you get into the weekend league – you get a lot more packs, more money, whatever. So, like, if you get, like, 10 wins, because you only get 30 games on a weekend league. So, if you get 10 wins, okay. if you can push for 10 and above, then you start getting decent packs. Then, in like, two mm. weeks' time, three weeks' time, your team will be decent. Yeah. And then so try to do icon pop. Okay. So, you suggest I must play against the online online opposition, not just on the, on the actual that, computer guy. The squad battles thing. The squad battles thing works when you have time. Do it. Okay. But then also, yeah, try play online after you've done the squad battle so that you can try get into the weekend league. And then once you get into the weekend league, like I'm saying, you'll get a lot more packs. You get more money. Uh, you get more like fitness things, contracts so that you can get better players. Yeah. I also wasn't into it at the beginning. I used to just play seasons. But now that I actually have time off, I'm like, let me play it. So. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to try that actually. Uh, yeah. We've got some comments here from guys that sent in before. Guys out okay. there that are watching, if you have any question, uh, comments or any questions for Tony or myself, just put them in the comment section below. We'll try to um, get them on um, quickly answered now. So, okay, you've already basically answered this one, but um, this is a tongue-in-cheek one. Um, <laughs> from Bay, he asked, uh, was it the mountain that convinced you to come to Cape Town? Or <laughs> Who was that? Who was that? Uh, <laughs> Okay. So he's asking, yeah, was it the bike? <laughs> <laughs> I did kind of answer it, but I mean, there are perks, obviously, uh, living in Cape Town, so I won't pretend like that doesn't uh, exist. So I will spend a few days uh, at Signal Hill and stuff like that and do all the touristy things mm. while I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Daniel Gallen. Um, I don't know if you know him. He's, one of the, he's a writer as well, freelance writer. Um, he asked, who's the best bowler on the SA domestic scene? And who hasn't played yet for the Proteas, and pref preferably someone that you faced in a match, and also how did that battle go? Um, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Okay, let me go. Warriors. Okay, Luto's played. Um, uh, I will say, actually, Bukaku is bowled really well against me. If, any, if you're asking me, you might even say I'm his bunny, but I'll dispute that because of white ball cricket. Um, I, I, when he was at the Warriors and stuff, when I first came on, he was really, really challenging. Obviously, you know, uh, Duan was good. Um, but at the moment, yeah, I'd say at the moment, um, okay, Dupavlon just played as well. Um, Yeah, I'd say probably between uh, like the guys that haven't played, I think Dupavlon's bowled really well against me. Bukaku has in Red Bull stuff. Um, I'm trying to think who else is there at the Knights. <sighs> yeah, I think those guys. Uh, yeah, I think those guys have bowled well to me personally. I think they've they've done well yeah. um, to me. Uh, Pete as well was also really good to me, but obviously he's played against played for South Africa. So yeah. Cool. Another platform is a guy actually that, that writes for them and is also very much involved with them. They call Bowl Through the Gate. Yeah. Uh, the guy's name is Abai. Um so he asked um you captain during the 2016 and the 19 World Cup. Um, how was that experience 
So how was that, how was that experience shaped as a player? Uh, like I said, we had, a, we had a really, really good team on paper, if you look at it. Uh, I was lucky to captain that side. I think there were a few guys that could have easily captained. Um, I think personally, um, you know, at school, the, that is the the, the, the pinnacle is SNA 19. Um, yeah. And I don't know how to say, but you might feel like, you know, you're on top of the world, you, you're playing, you're representing, you, that's the best thing you can do at that age group or that level. Um, and then when you get there, you, I think we played against really, really good countries. Um, before the World Cup and a few in. And obviously, we didn't do as well as we'd like. And I think when we came back, like I said, a few guys, even when I spoke to Carl Varane a couple of years ago about it, is that you almost like, it's not a wake-up call, but you almost think um, you're not actually there. You're here, and you need to do a lot more work to get there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I think, like for me, I, I trained hard. My first thing out of tucks, really hard, lost a lot of weight. Um, and I think from then on, I just always felt I needed to keep getting better and not actually just being happy with where I was, if that makes sense. I think at school, you yeah. can be playing a few guys, you can bully, you can dominate. You might only play two or three good schools out of maybe 10. Uh, you know, you can get away with, with, with that kind of stuff. Um, and mm -hmm. then you get the obviously best of the best and you don't do as well. And you, if I could almost say, almost embarrass yourself, um, mm -hmm. And you have to take a hard look in the mirror and think, okay, well, if this is really what I want to do, am I putting all the work that in that needs to be done? You know, that kind of chat actually happens yeah. or happened. And inspirations besides, obviously, cricketers. Uh, maybe I know Bung, Bunga Makaka told me that he, he loves Kanye West, which I frowned upon. I was like, why Kanye West? If he's watching, he said he's going to watch, but if he's watching, you'll, yeah, you'll West probably have a G. I can understand where he's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so so who are some of the guys that you um look up to i think for me i uh, my first first role model would definitely be uh my mother um because her and i pretty much have done this together um and i've seen the work she's done or whatever to try to put me through good school um you know give me opportunities take me to games you know that kind of stuff yeah. I've seen her come back home late from work and whatever when I was a youngster. So I think that would be my first first role model. And then obviously the um, the big dogs or whatever you want to call it. Um, if I'm honest, I don't think I had one specific one uh, growing up. I, mm -hmm. I can't say, I like, oh, I love Muhammad Ali, all those things. Um, I think I just took little inspiration from from few players. I think when I was young, obviously I played football. I, I used to love Terry Henry, um, but I think for me, my first one was always my mom. And then, like I said, taking little inspiration from other people. You know, trying to bat like Brian Lara or uh, stuff like that. Um, but no, to be honest, I didn't really have a big. Yeah. Focus on one person, if that makes sense. I think, cool. if anything, if anything, when I was young and, and going through high school, I really, really loved uh, Roger Federer. I think um, sure. that was like a role model That's for me. Um, yeah. I don't think I, I mean, I read, a lot of, I read a lot of his books or whatever, but I, yeah, I think when I was young, I think that would be the closest thing. I really enjoyed how he went about doing things, the, how easy it looked, just a little stroke of hair to the side, and then boom, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> so from a getting yourself in the game type of thing are you a type of guy that listens to music um before you before you go out to bat or etc i know it's a bit difficult for more difficult for open it to so because you just come off a feeling you have to go bat already but is there ways of you to get let's just say before a match or even with rugby before to get you amped what is on your playlist to get you amped before a match or etc yeah i like to listen to uh music not necessarily in a change room like you're saying because obviously they take our phones anti-corruption um but <laughs> uh i think like on the way to the ground and stuff i like to listen to music that i'm going to be able to rap while i'm batting um i'm at the non-strikers end and you know so i listen to a lot of like 50 cent uh my favorite is obviously biggie smalls um so I, I listen to music that I'm going to be able to recite and rap even uh, a little bit of Kanye in there, but not often. Uh, yeah, so a lot of Biggie Smalls the day before a game because it like takes me back to the when I was a youngster, makes me feel good. Yeah. 
Um, in rugby, I, I was a fly-off, so I didn't really need to be amped to make sure I'd cut legs. So I wasn't really like, ah. And I had guys in my change room that would hit my back and stuff. So you get amped anyway. So I, I didn't really have to have yeah. music. Um, and then for opener, I just, like you're saying, you, it's, it's always quite quick for opener. You, you're always warming up and then the captain tosses. So you need to have quick little things that can get you going. And that for me is like my old cricket diary. I have my blueprint that I try to read before I bat. Well, I will read before I bat and the night before. Um, and I might like have a look at the wickets and say, okay, it looks like it's going to do this today. These are my plans. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just maybe going over my boundary options or whatever, one options against certain bowlers that I know what they're going to try to do to me. And just reading that before or, or, before or while I'm panning up also just calms my mind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow me to think of outcomes and stuff like that because I know I have a problem mm -hmm. with sometimes being, okay, I need to get 100 today or whatever, but you're not always in control of that. You know what I mean? So like for me, reading yeah. the blueprint or whatever allows me to just focus on things that I feel like I can control and then taking it from there. Yeah, there's actually a cool, um, we're talking about Biggie again. Um, I'm also a massive Biggie fan. Obviously, the yeah. this B.I.G. movie was quite cool as well, the way they did it. But there's another series on Netflix. I don't know if you watched it yet. It's called Unsolved. Unsolved. Where they, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like, the way they did it. I was like, wow. The way they did yeah. it, I was like, yes, sir. A really yeah, cool I mean, series. Me too. Like, hip hop always has spoken to me in a way that other genres. I was a musician myself and I sang and write, wrote my own music. So I'm also obviously into all types of music. I collect music. But from... From a hip hop point of view, I always say like the way it can inspire you is different because people don't have to sing to make you into the to get you into the song. They're actually speaking to you. Yeah. And necessarily always are the choruses that are from a from a melody perspective catchy. It's you have to actually listen to the words. So I obviously yeah. respect the lyricists and yes, Eminem. Yes, yes. Um, Eminem. I tried everybody I speak to. I tried to get him into Machine Gun Kelly from because I've been following Machine Gun since that's, he was. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Are you telling me I'm gonna go to my iTunes and download that crazy white that guy, bro? No chance. I'm not gonna listen to that guy. Always, bro. <laughs> so you, if you have to actually listen to him at the beginning of his career when he started off and see how he's transitioned as a musician, you'll understand. The guy is unbelievable in the way he raps and the type of artist he is, and his story is also quite inspiring. So. I'm like, I like, the thing he the 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 song he released the the diss track uh for eminem like i actually think he beat eminem i'm gonna be honest i am yeah. an eminem fan but i'm still i like I'm then good. i was like okay maybe i'll give this guy a chance and listen to his music and then i was like nah, i don't know if it's rock no, but or you, what? What you the guy is so angry you? why is he so angry who who stole his dog <laughs> so if you listen to his uh so Rap Devil is actually not his best song, like not at all. It's probably not his best song, but I, I think I could see, okay, he's yeah. actually he's actually decent. Yeah. You must listen to his, you know, what? one that's not so angry, uh, uh, if you can get your hands on, it's called Black Flag. Black Flag. Listen to Black Flag. Yeah. Listen to yeah. Black Flag and come back to me and tell me, you can WhatsApp me and yeah. tell me what you think about that one. But okay, Black Flag is probably the best portrayal of what he is and what he's capable of. And then obviously okay. you can move on to his albums, like his general admission and bloom and stuff like that. But got a black flag, maybe maybe I'll con that will convince you of his talent. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Um that's obviously music, biggie, of course, hip hop, uh great. But um let's talk about some of the Netflix stuff that you said you watched. Um I they have to start money eyes. I haven't started it yet. Uh, don't kill me for that. Yeah. I was into Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders was... Yeah, Peaky Blinders is dope. <laughs> I was like, wow. And uh, I also enjoyed Sons of Anarchy. I don't know if you've watched Sons of Anarchy. I haven't. My best friend told me to watch it. Um, the, yeah. It's a biker gang, eh? Yeah, a biker gang, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Quite... I haven't watched it, but it looks decent. Charlie Hunnam is claim to fame. So um, okay. there, there's, a, there's a lot of awesome movies, obviously. Are you a big movie fan or not? Yeah, I'm a massive, massive movie fan. I try to watch with my girlfriend, but she sleeps. So it's like, <laughs> I don't even know why we're wasting time both looking for the movie because she falls asleep anyway. Um, yeah. But no, I enjoy thrillers. Thrillers are like, you know, like like, uh, like the prestige, uh, identity, uh, you know, like killer, like uh, proper ones, like law-abiding citizen, those 
Mm-hmm. Once you're trying to figure out who did this or whatever, I really enjoy thrillers. Yeah. Do you ever watch The Departed yet? The Departed. No, I haven't. Watch but that. I watched, Frank, I watched Frank show the other day. That was decent with the Gosling yeah. and what's the name? The the one who's Hannibal. I can't remember his name now. Anthony Hopkins. Yes, that was yeah. that was good. That's where he kills his wife. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I'm gonna still watch that one. Don't worry, recently... that, I didn't give away a spoiler. That's the first scene, bro. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the reported is a must watch. It's unbelievable. The the says he's, yeah, one of his best work. Um, obviously that's with this um, Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. uh, Matt Damon, Mark Wahlberg. It's I'm, not, I'm sure I've watched this actually. What is it about? It's about those cops. I don't want to give away the the spoiler, but like it's, no, it's I'm about pretty cops. sure I watched it. I'm like almost hundred percent sure I watched it. Yeah, I watched that. There was also good. Was a skill, skeleton key. I must watch that. Yeah. Yeah. that is good. Whoa, old movie, but that was that was freaky, man. Uh, you never know what's yeah. happening. In the old movie, it's quite good. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of good things out. I thought um, once upon a time in Hollywood was a decent movie, but I mean, obviously the old Guy Ritchie films like Flippin snatch and those stuff yeah oh, snatch is a gun yeah His latest movie was great his latest movie that's in the that's playing in the cinemas now um it's called now again um the gentleman flip but now is that good yeah good movie very good yeah, I, i've never seen matthew matthew mcconaughey is probably one of his best performances that i've seen him in so okay i was like taking it back and charlie Annum from from sons of anarchy is in there so obviously i'm gonna i'm a big son of Sons of fan so I had to give it a go. You're not into fantasy like Game of Thrones and shit and stuff like that. Eh? No, 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 I enjoy Game of Thrones, but I'm not into like uh, Stranger Things and like Flash and I, I don't know, just watch that stuff. No, but no, Game no, of no, Thrones no. was good. I just like the last season, but it was good, man. Yeah, last, last season was weak. Can't believe yeah. it. <laughs> that it had to end like the way it did. Yeah, like, it was like the was last two people. <laughs> no, it was fine. But no, I didn't like it. It's almost like all the fans were like, this is what we want to happen. This is what we had to happen. Okay, let's go middle ground. In the middle, yeah. Ground. Exactly. They yeah, just didn't do anything. Know. Yeah. So, last question to sign off here. Um, who are some of the guys that you are looking forward to playing against in FIFA? So, I've heard some stories come around from the SA camp about Bjorn Fertain and George Linder having these battles on fifa and both of them saying that they're better than the other one who are some of the guys in there that you're willing to battle in fifa over there would you say that Jesse? <laughs> i played at national academy when the a side was there hamza played someone at their playstation at the at the hpc and then i played a, i played yeah. a, like one half or something against hamza uh and he was quite good but i beat him obviously so i'd like to play him again full game uh but I don't really know. I, I, like, I, I think, obviously, like you say, George, and I've heard from everyone that George is gone. Um, so we'll have to see. Nandre is also not bad. Nandre plays a lot of games. Mm-hmm. He plays like uh, um, basketball or what's it called 2K, whatever. So he's, yeah. I know he's also a big gamer. Um, so I, I guess we'll have to see. We'll just make a list and then I'll just tick them off one by one as I go through them and finish them off. Oh, so <laughs> Bro, you have to get on it. I'm gonna send you this clip because you need to get on. You don't even have FIFA 20, so you need to get practicing, bro. So let's get going. <laughs> so Tony, <laughs> Tony, this is a side of by saying something to the cricket fanatics fans that have been supporting you and asked me to actually get hold of you for this interview. Uh okay. I'll just say thanks very much, guys. I really appreciate the support. Uh, sometimes it can be a lonely world as a cricketer, um, and sometimes there are the ugly comments or whatever you want to call it. So I do appreciate. The good ones it does actually mean a lot and um when you see it there it it does actually bring a smile to to my face and i actually do really really appreciate it so thanks a lot and thanks to you Khalid, for having me and writing relatively nice stuff about me most of the time but uh no thanks and yeah thanks for having me thanks Tony, man. i'll catch you soon i'll see you soon well, good luck of the, the lockdown cheers you too <laughs> yeah see you bro cheers Right,